Wow, big bumps. Wow, they might want to get that fixed. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing another one of these. When the traffic is this light, I mean, it's just, there's no excuse. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And today is going to be my most daring fuel economy challenge yet. Today, I'm going to be attempting to drive my 1999 4 litre V8 Jaguar S-Type across the entire country, starting down at Land's End, driving all the way across to Ness Point, which is the easternmost part of the UK and England. So I've done some calculations and it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because the S-Type that I have has a 69.5 litre fuel tank or about 15.3, just under UK gallons and I've got to cover a distance of 431 or so miles and that is on the shortest available route. But it's gonna be difficult because the Jags combined fuel economy according to the manual is 23.1 miles per gallon. And from experience, it generally seems to average around 21. I'm going to need to average a figure of 28.2 miles per gallon to make the 431 miles. And of course, it'd be nice to have a little bit of leeway too. So realistically, today I need to be averaging 30 miles per gallon, which I'm actually a little bit concerned about, but we're gonna have to see when we get in the car if this is gonna be possible or not. So we'll leave here then, we'll get down to Land's End about half an hour away, we'll fill up the car, then drive across the country. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a long day. ceremoniously left the Land's End sign, which is just literally there. I actually want to make sure we're leaving here with a full tank of fuel, because remember earlier this morning, we started at the hotel around 15 miles away. Well, we probably used a couple of liters in the process of just getting here. So, jerry can, petrol cap open. Let's make sure this thing is absolutely brimming with super juice. That's it, that's it. That is what you call a full tank of petrol. So now I think we have the best possible chance of getting to Nest Point. Okay, well this is it, the moment of truth. Let's get going on this epic adventure. First thing to do, I'm gonna go into here, just reset my trip. We did 291 miles getting here. We hold reset and it's done. And it's saying a range, gosh, this is gonna be impossible. Range estimate is 326 miles. My route, because there's been a road closure, is 456 miles. So that's 130 miles of surplus that we're gonna have to find. So anyway, it's enough talking. Let's get on and do it, shall we? So three, two, one. Straight into drive. Let's navigate ourselves nice and quickly out of this visitor's car park. This is it. Average fuel consumption so far, 5.2 <laughs> miles per gallon. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing another one of these. It's currently half past two in the afternoon. My estimated arrival time is around half past 10 this evening. It's a long day of driving. So I've done three of these fuel economy challenges on my channel now. Number one was my seven series, number two, was my Land Rover to Scotland and back, my Range Rover. Number three was an Audi R8 all the way from the Nürburgring back to the UK. But of the three, and this is now the fourth, this is by far the one I'm most concerned about, just because of that huge difference between our estimated range and our target distance. It's such a large discrepancy that even I'm wondering if this is possible. 
Now the first 20 miles or so, I think as far as Penzance sort of distance, is these sorts of roads, these single carriageway national speed limit roads. The rest of the journey, however, is high speed roads. It's the A30, which is mostly dual carriageway. It's the M5 and then the M4 and then the M25. The great joy is that at these speeds, it's absolutely fabulous to drive, but I drove this down last night and it was equally pleasant at higher speeds. I will just say it will be miraculous if we do this. Not only the fuel economy challenge, but probably best part of 700 miles, 800 miles even, in just a couple of days in this 1400 quid 1999 Jaguar. I mean, that is testament to the car if it's able to achieve this. And so as with all of the other fuel economy challenges I've done, the key here is, well, using this, using your brain to think ahead, to look ahead. The whole objective here is not to use that brake and to use the throttle pedal as little as possible. I want to be getting up to an optimum speed and not removing myself from that speed at all. And certainly never having to brake unnecessarily, which would mean I'd have to accelerate again and get up to that optimum speed. And by accelerating, you're obviously using that precious fuel in the back there. So today really is all about making sure I'm not having to make any sudden adjustments to my feet on the pedals. Before we continue any further with this challenge though, let me just take a quick moment to talk to you about today's video sponsor. I want to say a really big thank you to YFood for sponsoring today's video and for making video projects like this one and these big journeys possible. In today's video, I'm driving across the country pretty much continuously on a journey that's around eight or nine hours and that's where YFood comes in. So YFood, if you haven't heard of them already, make these awesome meal replacement drinks. They contain tons and tons of vitamins and minerals. They're very high in protein and fiber. So one of these 500 milliliter bottles can keep you going for several hours at a time, which is obviously perfect for what I'm doing today. But in your day-to-day -day life, if you're not driving across the country for a YouTube video, perhaps you can't take a full lunch break or you've got to travel somewhere to a meeting and you need to eat, this is where these are fantastic because you can substitute the whole sitting down process, having a meal with one of these, which when you're on the move, when you're busy, as I am today, is absolutely perfect. The other quite important thing I should say about Y food is that they're actually really tasty. This one here is the crazy coconut. And with me today, I've also got my happy banana flavor. This is probably my favorite actually. But yes, needless to say, they're absolutely yummy and there's lots and lots of flavors for you to choose from. So Y food saves time. It's accessible because everyone can try them. And also it's really, really tasty. So if you fancy then ordering some Y food and giving it a go for yourself, Go to the link in my description and use the discount code that can be seen on the screen now to get yourself a little bit of money off. And of course, by doing this, you're not only supporting my fantastic channel sponsor, YFood, but you're supporting my channel and allowing me to do more videos like this as well. So without any further ado, let's get back to the car on the road between Land's End and Ness Point. Okay, so we're around half an hour in now. We've done, I don't know, about 15 or 20 miles. Uh, average is 25.1 miles a gallon, which isn't so bad considering there's quite a lot of traffic around. It's just been a little bit more than I wanted to start this journey off with. And there is the first of many, I'm sure, <laughs> overtakes. I don't think I've ever been overtaken by a Hyundai Tucson before. Range 317 miles, distance remaining 435. So we need then an extra 118 miles. Some of you might also be wondering, why am I driving from Land's End to Ness Point and not the other way around. It's a very simple reason for that. The prevailing winds in this country, in the United Kingdom, come from the southwesterly direction. And at the moment, it's no different this week. The weather, we are having winds coming up from the southwest. So in other words, we should theoretically have a tailwind component for most of this journey. 
My aim really is the instant fuel indicator. When accelerating, my target is to keep that above 20. So I want to go a little bit faster. We've got 12 miles on this road with no roundabouts. I'm gonna try and get up to 60 miles an hour at least. I'm also looking at an altimeter on my phone as well because I want to know when we're going up and when we're coming down because if we're going up a hill, I'm not gonna try and accelerate. If we're coming down one, I'll know that I've got some gravity to my advantage. It's all very nerdy and boring, but if it means we can drive across the country for 90 quid basically, because that's what it is to fill this tank up, then it's all worth it. I've got my sat nav in the Jag set to sort of show the entire route. And you can see that the distance I've got to cover is far less than if I was to drive from my destination at Nest Point to Germany. It's a long way to go. It's 4.35 in the afternoon now, and as you can see, the skies are darkening, the lights are illuminating the road ahead, and actually, the last however long since I spoke to you has been sublime. The car's been fantastic, and we've been probably averaging around 65 to 70 miles per hour, because the roads have sort of just been a bit like this, but the car's just been gliding along. It's been wonderful. and. Our all important average is up to, not quite 30, it's just gone up actually, 29.8 miles per gallon. We have an estimated range on the trip computer of 273 miles. Now, according to our current route, we've got 338 miles remaining. So, if I can do some maths very quickly, that's 65 miles of surplus. But I have to say, this, this engine is wonderful. On those up hills, if you're trying to sustain 70 miles per hour, it's really got no problem doing that. It's always got enough power available. And I won't demonstrate now, but if you do want to put your foot down, the thing really flies as well. It's also very quiet, less a few little squeaks and rattles I've picked up. But actually, when I've got my CD playing, and yes, I am listening to a CD, you can't hear anything. It's really, really quiet and very comfortable as well. It's a really lovely place to be and I can't think of many other places, definitely not for 1,400 quid, that I'd want to spend this much time covering this much distance. Well, good evening, everybody. It is now 19.42 or 20 to 8. And uh, I've just stopped for about an hour here. I don't know where I am, actually. So we've done 245 miles. Remaining is 204 miles. And the fuel tank needle is just below half. In terms of our range, it says we have 172 miles of range. So remember that initial 130 mile surplus that we needed to find? Well, so far, we've got that down to 32 miles. My average fuel, then, the big number, 30.6. So, providing that I've got my calculations right um, and, and that the manual is correct and it is a 69 and a half litre tank, then we should get there with a tiny bit of fuel to spare. But there's a lot of miles, still over 200, and a lot of things that could happen between then and now especially the M25, that's a little bit worrying. But so far, we've, to be fair, we've not had any incidents. We've been very lucky. The roads have been quite clear. And now it's quarter to eight, almost eight o'clock by the time we actually set off. And so hopefully, by the time we get to the M25 in probably just a little over an hour, it shouldn't be too bad. And the car, let me just tell you again, has been absolutely fantastic, faultless, which I'm really, don't want to say surprise about, but I'm very impressed with this great little Jag. Not so little, actually, it's pretty huge. Anyway, let's get the engine started and um, should we continue, I guess? Just a mere three hours and 35 minutes to go then. 204 miles, 
hopefully getting in by 26 minutes past 11. That's if we don't stop again. And now we've got to accelerate onto the M4. Let's try and do this as painlessly as possible. We're doing 25 miles an hour now. Wow, the big bumps. Wow, they might want to get that fixed. Into fifth gear, 55 miles per hour. We're averaging now 32 miles per gallon. That's good, that seems pretty painless. It hasn't really hurt our average. Our average has gone down to 30.5, but now we're up to 40 miles per gallon. We're definitely on a, a downhill bit here. We're coasting along at 60 miles an hour, slowly increasing that speed. And the good news is that the M4 does not look too busy at all. any further with this challenge I just want to give a special mention to my grandpa of all people when I was filming that whole sequence this morning at, at Land's End um, I found out that he was having to go into hospital for somewhat of an emergency operation to do with his heart which was a little bit worrying but all seemed to be okay I just got off the phone and, and found out that it was quite a challenging operation. It didn't quite go to plan. He suffered quite a major heart attack during it, but he has actually pulled through, luckily. And it just got me thinking about him a lot. And um, I just want to dedicate this video to him, especially because, well, he's instrumental in one of the reasons I, I love cars so much. He used to take me to Ferrari dealerships back when it was Grey Pools in Nottingham, sorry, Grey Pools in Loughborough, then Grey Pools in Nottingham. He used to take me to the dealerships where I used to go and look at cars. And his next door neighbour at the time, a guy called Trevor, had a C5 generation Chevrolet Corvette. And I always used to nag him saying, when can I go out in that Corvette? And lo and behold, one day, Trevor said, come out with me in the Corvette and that was my first sort of fast car experience. So special mention to you, Grandpa, thanks so much. And I hope you're around for a lot longer so that I can scare you in some cars. Anyway, I just wanted to say that because it was on my mind today. This is very bizarre because I'm on home turf now. My house is about half an hour that way. Heathrow Airport, we're just passing off sort of my two o'clock now. You can see them all lining up and landing on the westerly runway. And we're about to take our turn off the M4 for the M25. The bit that I've been dreading really, the M25, but actually traffic on the M4 has been pretty light. And I don't think it's gonna be any different once we get onto the M25, we're about to find out anyway. But this is the part of the journey that normally gets quite nerve wracking because it's the part where the fuel needle starts to sort of flirt with that quarter way marker, quarter to empty. And it's doing that now. And can I just say, I'm gonna make a whole video on this, but one way you know immediately you're on the M25 is the lane discipline the driving standards. I'm doing 65 miles an hour in lane one. I've now got to go into lane three to pass this Audi Q3, which is doing 60 in lane two. And then if you can see up ahead, so I'm doing 67 miles an hour. Now I've passed that traffic in lane two. I'm going to move back into lane two and then lane one. I've probably got 100 meters or 30 seconds at least until I need to move out from that lorry but look we've got everyone else in lane three and four for no reason fair play to this courser he's moved into lane two but everyone else and i can see it all behind as well lane one and two are basically not being used whatsoever i get it in heavy traffic when the gantry is displaying 50 60 40 and changing the variable speed limit but when the traffic is this light, I mean, it's just, there's no excuse. It's poor and lazy driving. And it is an absolute nightmare. And is actually quite problematic for a number of reasons, which I'm gonna go into in a video. So 
stay tuned for that. Right, so remember that fuel surplus I keep going on about? We've got 54 miles to go and 54 miles of estimated range. I can't quite believe this has happened. I genuinely didn't think we'd ever get to the point where our range matched our remaining distance, but we, we have. Maybe I've wrongly doubted this car. There was just a part of me that said, it's not gonna be able to do it. It's not up to the challenge. My old seven series had an 88 litre tank. My Range Rover had a 105 litre tank. This just 69 litres, yet we're covering over 450 miles, driving literally across the country of England. And with just 51 miles to go, dare I say it, I, I think we might do this. I think we might do this. I'm just waiting for that orange fuel level light to come on. We have now entered a sequence of sort of round about half a mile, round about one and a half miles, round about, which is probably the worst possible type of layout for fuel economy because it means you're constantly having to accelerate and decelerate. So right at the very end of this trip, we've come across the most challenging part of it yet. 40 miles an hour as we approach this roundabout, which is completely clear. We're gonna take the first exit off over here. Oh, that was nice and speedy through there. Who says these fuel economy challenges can't be fun? Currently doing 11 miles per gallon, that's painful. Okay, that looks like it's it for the roundabouts now because my next roundabout, according to this, is 30 miles away and we have just 36 miles to go. No hesitations, nothing from the, from the car, it's still saying 40 miles of range. At the moment, I can't quite believe it, but we seem to be in the green. This is seriously, seriously close now. I'm trying to take this roundabout nice and quickly. Oh, that's very quickly for a big barge. Didn't lose any speed though. We're four miles from Nest Point. 17 miles of range. Welcome to Lowestoft. We're in Lowestoft. And I really don't want to be using that throttle at all now because if the tank is really as empty as I think it is, then a sudden gulp of, of petrol might choke the car. I'm gonna to have to actually brake here because I don't think I can take this roundabout at 50 miles per hour. I think we'd just go straight ahead. Right, is there anything coming? No, we can take it at 30 though, can't we? Right, 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 right. Perfect, oh yes. Three miles left. I cannot believe this. I really cannot believe this. I feel like a, I feel like a, a, a naughty school kid. I feel like I've done something I, I shouldn't have, have done. There's absolutely no way I thought I was doing this. This is utterly, utterly remarkable. Well, this is it now, less than half a mile to go. It's all very industrial and quite intimidating around here, but I think we're about to get to our destination. Is this it? You have arrived at Nest Point Car Park. Huh. Is this it? Oh, wow. I can't believe it. We've arrived at Nest Point after completing 446.2 miles, we've got 14 miles of range remaining. We've averaged 30.9 miles per gallon. I cannot believe this car has done it. That is absolutely, absolutely incredible.
Here we are, west to east in one day, in one sitting in the Jag. And I have to say, I feel great. What a car. Well, you'll have to take my word for it, but we're here at Nest Point. Uh, there's a huge wind turbine there. And I have seen the point. It's just over this wall, which I can try it. Uh, things I do. I can try and show you, but it is just over there, the actual point. You can't see a thing and you probably can't hear a thing. So I will end this video here, but I may well go out in the car tomorrow when I'm home to just summarize everything because it's been, well, a whirlwind. And actually the truth of the matter is I've got a three and a half hour drive home now. So anyway, uh, yeah, let's just try and get back to the car without dying. There we are. We're at Ness Point. And we were indeed at Nest Point after an epic 446 mile drive. I couldn't quite believe that on the same morning, we'd been at Land's End, the westerly most point. And of course, we'd managed to do this entire journey on one tank of fuel with a little bit left to spare. Nonetheless, I now had a three and a half hour drive home through the early hours of the morning. And so I topped the car up with some fuel from my jerry cans and made that journey thank you all so much for being a part of this incredible adventure i hope you've enjoyed the video please do make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did like it and if you could subscribe that's a massive way of showing your support for this youtube channel thank you all so much and i'll see you very very soon